it's next. It's next. Microphone's yeah, on. I didn't notice it. Micro microphone's on. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Hello. Welcome to Parowin City Council, April 11th, 2024. It is 6 o'clock p.m. Uh, we appreciate you coming out here tonight. I was saying before we started, it's a beautiful evening, so um, grateful for those of you who are here and inside. Um, we've asked that Kristen Robinson would give an opening prayer for this evening and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Our dear, kind Heavenly Father, we meet before Thee with gratitude in our hearts for the beautiful place that we live and the people that are willing to serve. Heavenly Father, please watch over us, and we say this in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, and just making note that our city attorney, Scott Burns, is on his way, and so we should be seeing him arrive shortly. Um, do, does the council have any conflicts or personal interest in any of the agenda items this evening? No, no Mayor. No. no, Mayor. Okay, thank you. And now we can move into public comment. This time is for you. If you'd like to come to the microphone and state any concerns, questions, or interests to the council, you, are, you have two minutes each. And that time starts now. All right, seeing that no one is approaching or raising their hand, we'll move now into the consent portion. These items are usually approved by one motion. Item five is approval of the city council minutes from March 14, 2024. And number six, approval of the warrant register for April 11, 2024. I'll make a motion to approve the consent meeting items five and six. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, thank you, motion carries. <clears throat> Moving now from consent into action, these items um, do require a vote. We can have discussions about those, and, and then we will move to motions and to voting. The first item is number seven. It's discussion and vote on billboard ordinance. It's ordinance 2024-07, and we will start that conversation with Dan Jessen. Okay, yeah, if you could. <clears throat> So just to uh, remind everybody of where we're at on this, we've talked about this, hashed it over many meetings, um, planning and zoning here, 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 and we had a work meeting last time, and um, basically, uh, per the request of the council, um, created two um, billboard ordinances. Um, uh, the first one, which we'll just call option A, um, which would um, ban any new billboards within the city limits. It it actually um, defines what a billboard is because that's pretty important if you're going to ban something. We didn't have that anywhere in our definitions. And um, it then addresses um, the non-conforming status of any existing billboards that are in place before the ban. Um, and the reason that's important is because uh, there is in our non-conforming code um, a paragraph in there about signs <clears throat> and th it was the intention as we had kind of discussed it that if if there was an existing billboard it would be grandfathered um, but specifically in our non-conforming status or code where it talks about signs if it's non-conforming it has to come down after three years so if we didn't specifically address that even the ones that were there would have to come out after three years and I think the intention of the council, if we were to vote on the ban, would allow any existing ones to stay there. Um, but I did copy the part of the non-conforming status that says that if it goes into disrepair or non-use for more than a year, at that point it loses its grandfathering status. And that's pretty typical of all of our non-conforming code. It's once that use it isn't, isn't there for more than a year, then it loses its grandfather. So. To rehash, um, number one or number uh, option A bans them, 
has a definition and deals with a non-conforming status. <clears throat> the second option, option B, and it does have some yellow in there because if we want to move forward with that one, we need to define um, some of the details of it. Um, option B <clears throat> would allow billboards um, along I-15, adjacent to I-15, north of exit 78, south of exit 75. Um, it, would, it would basically restrict any new billboards to happening within that area. Um, the other thing is that um, they would be prohibited within residential zoning districts, something that we had talked about, kind of batted that around. And then the question is, is because we've when we when we originally discussed this and the original recommendation came from planning and zoning they had put some guardrails on there that said okay we're okay with billboards but they had some guardrails and I didn't put all of those in here I didn't go back into that it's just the ones that the council had actually discussed was residential zones and how many feet to where you could put one I mean if you live if you're in a residential zone and you have a commercial zone right next to you, could you put a billboard so that it's literally a shadow of the billboard or if it's got lights on it and it's right there by somebody? So it, there's usually some sort of a, of a distance of where you could or couldn't put them. So, um, so that's the number two is they would be prohibited within a certain number of feet, which we would have to define. And if there's any other restrictions that we wanted to talk about, like you know, some of the things that Planning Commission talked about was, was flashing lights, um, the this total size of the sign we could restrict if we wanted to. We have been advised very astutely from legal to stay away from anything that would actually govern the content because that, now you're getting into freedom of speech issues, so we can't get into that. But we can say size, shape, flashing lights, we could, we could say that they have to have down lighting for dark skies. There's things that we could regulate, it should we choose to, but I really didn't detail any of those because I wasn't really sure where you guys wanted to go and I didn't really want to put, you know, words into your mouth. So that's what I brought you. Right. So with that, we can open a discussion. We could make a motion. Um, going to lean into the council to see what you'd like to do next with these options. Hey, Kelly, will you put of in between state I know and disrepair on the right side? Something. They're left in a state of disrepair? Yeah. Thank you. Let's hear it, Dean. <laughs> Let's hear it, John. Well, I'm, I'm just trying to think. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no. Let's see. I motion to... Uh, Accept option A as our new ordinance. I'll second it. All those in favor, and this is an ordinance, so it will be by roll call vote. We'll start with Council Member Burton. David Burton, aye. Sharon Downey, aye. John Dean, aye. Dave Harris, no. Rochelle Topham, aye. All right, and with that, the motion carries. Thank you. Now moving into action meeting item number eight. This is vote to approve the mayor's recommendation of Troy Hoyt as an alternate, alternate for planning and zoning to replace Tony Leidsman. And I would like the motion from the council. I'll move to approve the mayor's recommendation of Troy Hoyt as an alternate for planning and zoning to replace Tony Leidsman. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, thank you. And that motion carries. Um, consideration, this is number nine, of petition to annex for South Central Holdings. The annexation will be presented by Dan Jessen. Okay, just a reminder of the process. Um, we're not approving an annexation. We're not really getting into the details of it. Um, if somebody proposes to annex within the city limits, they have to... A, have a meeting with the county planner and city planner, um, zoning or administrator, whatever, to discuss whether it's even legal or feasible, any, any possible concerns. They then go through a process with the county that, that 
does mails what's called a notice of intent to all affected entities, and by entities, um, think taxing, school district, um, any entities that provide services to the area. Um, once they go through that, and there's a certain time limit that passes, they then approach the city with a petition to annex. What that does is then you guys get the option to say, yeah, we'll look at it, or we won't look at it doesn't mean that we're going to annex it, it just means we'll look at it. I think the reason why when, the, when they redid the annexation process at the legislature that they gave this option to the cities on the front end was there's a lot of time spent by, by city staff, by what, whoever the pro property owners are that are proposing to annex, and um, they're going to spend money on engineering, they're going to spend money on, on design work, and if we're not even going to consider it, we're not even going to look at it, then we can tell them no up front. Um, we're not even going to look at it. If we're like, yeah, we'll look at it, then the next step is it, it goes through a legal review. We have to make sure it's within our annexation boundaries. We have to make sure that they've followed the process up to this point. That's usually a you know, pretty simple process from the attorney's standpoint. Assuming there isn't any I legal issues with an annexation, um, then we go through all of the noticing periods. They mail things out to the surrounding property owners. Um, there's a, um, a protest period that certain qualified property owners can protest. If it protests, then it goes through a separate thing. Then it goes through a public hearing at planning and zoning. Then that's when it really gets down to brass tacks of, of what is the proposed zoning of this annexation? What would they like to do? Um, density, how does it fit our master plan for traffic and where do roads go, how does it, you know, and so planning commission looks at those things and then makes a recommendation for or against. We then get real serious about, and I would propose that we, we, we work on it the whole time, an annexation agreement of, of some of the things that we would request or require them to do if we allow them to annex and assuming we can kind of come to some sort of an agreement on that. It then comes to the city council, which then has another public hearing and then votes on it. That's the time we vote on it. So we're at the point where we're just saying we'll look at it or we won't look at it. Now, as far as this annexation, it is um, actually two parcels <clears throat> owned by the same um, uh, party, which is South Central Holdings LLC. This is immediately West, or east, actually closer to town than the, than the parcel where the new um, Ace Hardware is going to be built. That's still in the county, um, and um, the, uh, the both parcels just make up this, what you see the red square going around. That little piece there, that little what we call a flag lot, I think that's where there is a, a house, if I'm not mistaken. It was carved out, but the owner has acquired all of that property and um, is proposing annexation. So point of information, uh, Dan, is this the parcel that's just west of Painted Hills RV between there and the yes. proposed East Hardware? Between, mm. is it Painted Hills? Is that the phone? Isn't that what they call yeah. yeah, it was Evil Water. No, it's, it's Painted, Painted Hills. Hills. This is the parcel between those two. It's sitting vacant, mostly okay. vacant. There's some storage containers on it. <laughs> which, by the way, I've received calls about, and those storage containers are in the county, obviously, right now. But um, th this will require some, some in-depth um, look into um, a frontage road, into you know, zoning. Um, it's actually on our, on our master plan as zoned residential. Um, Is this part of the page property? No, that's farther down. That's further, further down. I Is that like a further a prior owner? No. no. No, it's South Central LLC, Holdings LLC. Okay. So are you talking about the White House? The Hewlett uh -huh. like the mm -hmm. House? The White with the So is it red red right, right when you're is it that it whole property the right there? It's that, that whole property. It's 30 oh, acres. Or they've cleared For some reason, I was stuff. thinking that's where Ace just cleaned it up. No, Ace is going. <clears throat> so that last house across from KB, okay, mm -hmm. so Ace is going directly behind that, north oh. of that. That's lot three, isn't it? That's lot three on okay, this map. Mm -hmm. If you zoom in, um, okay, so I, you can I'm see where Ace is going to go. This is where like north, south, east, west, give me land. Yeah. Right. North is up. <laughs> north is up. You can see the interstate charging off there. Okay. Go left just a little bit. It's right there on the bottom. 
right mm -hmm. below the, there's a, believe it or not, don't grab right there and just, just drag it left. There you go. So lot three is ace. Oh. Mm -hmm. Lot two is where the terribles is, uh, has been approved. And lot, and lot one is the hotel. hotel. Okay. And then that, 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 that little rectangle below that APN 0501 is where the, that house is. That's the house. And then there is that white house with that like oh. potato cellar in the front. Yes. Um, okay. They're restoring that, by the way. I don't oh, think yeah. their intent is to tear it down. I think their intent mm -hmm. is to actually restore it and use it. So that's the, the old Ralph Hewlett home. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yep. So this includes that. Okay. And it's okay. all of the property around that. Isn't that the small square in the middle? It's the I the believe house. so. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not 100%, but I believe so. That's what I think. We could pull it up on the parcel viewer, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Either that or it's next yeah. to that, and that was an old house, a homestead okay. or something. The painted Hill is just to the north and the east. east. It's that big yeah. parcel to the, okay. to, the, to the east and slightly north. So the motion is to consider the consideration of petition to annex or South Central Holdings annexation. So the motion would be to um, accept the petition and continue the process. Okay. If 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 you guys wanted to move forward, that's the motion. That would be the motion. I'll make a, a, a motion to move to consider the petition of annex for South Central Holdings annexation. I'll second it. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you. The motion carries. So we'll move now into the work meeting. Um, item number 10 is a power board committee and power cost adjustment discussion led by council member David Harris. All right. So basically it's like a couple things that are involved in this. And I don't know if Jeremy would care to come up or if he cares to come up yet, but, <laughs> um, I guess my concern is like all, none of the committees have the kind of power the power board's got to adjust to your rates, and I kind of think they shouldn't have that ability. So I think it should be when the rates change, it should be the council in a whole. They're a recommendation committee and not setting the bill committee. I guess you know. Yeah, um, David and I have talked a little bit about this already, but um, I think the reason that the Power Board did govern this originally is due to the fact that um, we had multiple meetings discussing this before we brought the PCA uh, model to the Council, so they had a lot more eyes on it longer. Um, it, to me, it really doesn't... Yeah, uh, it doesn't... I'm not yeah. getting your point, too, you know. Um, but I think that's the reason that they had the the ownership of it or better the the ability to steer the PCA. Like this whole thing's obviously very new for everybody to deal with. So yeah. trying to figure out how to drive this. Is, yeah. Is well, different. and Dave, Dave and I um, talked earlier, that, and he brought up a good point, um, which um, you know his feelings are. We he didn't express it tonight, but I'll kind of you can correct me if I'm yeah. wrong. But he's like you know we we paid for this study. We have the the information that was provided to us, and we we kind of put it on power board or council to determine where we want to be. But the study gives us a number. Uh, then we have the option to adjust high or low to recoup losses. So really, the elephant in the room is what do we want to do with losses that we lost last year? Um, and if we just follow the study, then we're not looking at under collection any longer. But Dave, to Dave's point, if we do just follow the study, it does probably it'll, a better. Yeah, it'll take longer to say maybe collect under or the past stuff. Yeah. But, but it's like, go ahead, Sharon, sorry. The Power Board brought everything to the council. The council approved the rates going up, and the council approved the PCA. It was not, it was not. I don't, I don't want to say not determined because it was, was determined, talked about in the, power, in the power board meeting, but the council did approve it. It was not approved solely by the power board. Yeah, and I think Dave's concern is that when we make a change, uh, say we decide to hold the PCA at four cents to, right. to take into account under collection, that is 
is uh, the power, uh, right now the power board makes that decision. Dave feels like it should be a council as council is elected and yeah. you know by citizens. Right the power way. board is a volunteer board, but the reason it was is because the power board had a lot of eyes on it. They have knowledge about it. They have a background. Yeah, like we see we see a lot more of how the whole study is going now. So yeah. I don't know. Like I got huge problems with just overcharging everybody paying power. Well, I I mean I I don't know that it's being over. It's not really charged. I think we're charging. recoup trying to. Re I mean, well, yeah, and I understand, but, 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 but the point of the whole PCA was to flow with power costs, correct. whether they be high or correct. low. So if we choose to just follow the model, we got to realize that we got to charge citizens what the model says, whether it be one cent or whether correct. it be six. Exactly. If, have, if we choose to follow the model, we need to be able to. And if it says zero, have a back we go to put zero. That on the citizen. Exactly. Because. The whole model is just based off of flowing of power purchase. Costs. Correct. You know, and to me, I don't really care who governs. Also, we follow the model. It's yeah, because like I don't see why we paid all that money to do this, and then we don't. Well, and I talked to it. I talked yeah. to some members of the power board, and Jared's here now, but um, they felt like the last time we made that decision to change it, they didn't want to go exactly as the model said, which was like 2.7. They wanted to hold it at three because they kind of felt like direction from the council was to slowly recover under collection. And so the power board thought they were doing what yeah. they felt was right by the yeah. council's direction. And that's why it was at three. But it makes my job easier to just follow the model. I, I input seven yeah. numbers, and I give that number to Judy, and that goes on the bills. You know, but um, but, it, but really, the, I think the topic at hand is under collection. We lost, I mean, it's at like 550000 over the three years. But we're still under collected based off the model. Did that kill the power department? No. I mean, we're still functioning pretty well. And we, we, yeah, this, we, we, we cut some things out of the budget. We That loss doesn't make or break the city. If it was making it to where it was hurting the city, yeah. well, I, that's I wouldn't say nothing. I'd be like, we got to get a little more money. But yeah, but like, I think the whole point of the, the PCA fine. is so we don't see those losses again. So that now we, I mean, best case scenario, yeah. we would have the PCA three years ago, and it would have been, you know, half Correct. a cent here and then six cents when we got really bad rather than having all these losses. So really I think the decision tonight is what we want to do with under collection. If we want to just say, hey, we've kind of recovered, like we can still move forward. It's right. not going to – one time is maybe not ultimately detrimental to the department. Multiple times would be, but we have the mechanism in place to handle that now. Yeah. And, and if, if we choose to just follow the spreadsheet – it doesn't really have to be governed by the power board or the council. I mean, I would bring it up in both meetings as we maybe quarterly or whatever and say, well, here's where we are. Because all I do is get numbers from UAMPS, Judy, hydro production. I put them in, and that gives me a number. It's not like I manipulate it. It's these yeah, set numbers. Yeah, it is I can, what it is. And I can show those to everybody that wants to see, you know. So, But it really, I think under collection is the, is the elephant in the room. Like, do we want to continue with that, or do we want to follow the spreadsheet? And, can, I, you know, and today, can I jump in and 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 I? By the way, I don't. <clears throat> I have I have one bit of advice on. Well, let me let me say this first. I want to actually read the 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 reason and the and the the setup of the power board per our code. It is set up a little bit different than the water board, or um, airport board, or something like that. Though uh, the water board it explicitly says in our code that it will not um, be able to change rates. The power board, it doesn't say that. Not only doesn't it not say that, it actually it sets up the power board to kind of run the department, including um, self-sustaining economically run the department. Um, and I think that's the reason why they, whoever wrote this put two members of the council on the power board to make sure that it wasn't running rogue. Um, the council, at the end of the day, can kick people off the power board, can, 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 can take over and, and run it. We know that the council is where our elected officials are and that who's, who's responsible to the people. But I think they, they kind of set up the power board to, to have actually a little bit more power uh, than um, most boards. And let me read what it says. So this is under um, um, Chapter 7, which is power. No, which is public utilities. Chapter 02, which is power. Um, B, which is power board. So the, the department shall be headed, and it's talking about the power department, shall be headed by a power board which shall have exclusive jurisdiction over the department and its operations and facilities, except as may be specifically otherwise provided by ordinance. In other words, Jeremy, I'm still your boss, but the power board is your boss too, right? Um, the power board shall be responsible for the operation of the department, 
the proper functioning of the department. See, our, we don't give our water board um, jurisdiction over, you know, our water department. They're the recommending body. This one is it's got jurisdiction over the department. May make such regulations and rules as it deems necessary for the proper functioning of the department. And then this is the part I think actually which gives it a little more weight. Shall see that the department operates on a self-sustaining economic basis and shall report to the mayor and city council whenever requested to do so. So it kind of gives them a bunch of power, but says, yeah, but you're on a leash, you know, by the, by the, by the city council. So now having said that, let me give you my advice, because I, I don't really care one way or the other. What I think I would get away from would be having a rate discussion by the city council on a monthly basis. Um, I think that that would be maybe a bad idea just because I mean, sometimes those take a long time. They can be very, you know, um, I'm, and I'm not saying this needs to be in a closed room. The Power Board is a, is a public meeting. Anybody can go to the public meeting. But if we have to go through a rate discussion in city council every month, I think that's a bad idea. Now, however, to go to Dave's point if, and, and, and Jeremy's point, if we actually set it to auto follow the PCA, then you're actually not having a discussion every month. Correct. Um, Correct. And, and you could... You could you could deal with it that way, or you could you could give it to the power board and say these are the guardrails we'd like you to stay within on how we want you to operate the PCA. But I just wouldn't want to just every I wouldn't want to have a, a work meeting or an action meeting every month that we now decide what the PCA is going to be. I just yeah. think that'd be bad. Well, another concern, and, and that's and I, that's that sounds good to me. Yeah, another concern I have with that is if you're going to address it every month is. A large driver of the PCA numbers is the UAMPS bill, which we receive on the 25th of the following month, and then we get the bills out by the 30th or the 1st. The timing that you're going to have a small window of time we have to make is going to be hard. But, but, but putting the PCA on autopilot takes a lot of that out. Yeah, I th and you've alluded to this, but that's why in this ordinance it, uh, it still states, like it does in all the others, it says subject to the yeah. advice, consent, and approval of the mayor and the city council. Yep. Yes. So, yeah, that's. I think that's the reason. So it could go like like if we want to discuss it every month, that probably ought to best happen in power department. But if you guys as a council wanted to keep to to retain that, but I mean Dave's on the count, on the power board, Sharon's on the power board. But if you wanted to make that decision here, I'd say go for it. Just don't have us hash over rates every Jared, month in this. Are you? He keeps being ready. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Just a couple of things. Um, so there's a discussion about that you feel like the power board has too much. Well, it's just a hole. It's no, too it's much. That's just a big decision for. Absolutely. You know. And so. I, and I, I yeah. And it's but like, to Dan's point is that we're already doing that monthly rate study or whatever because we all meet, we all decide, and the last one was a little bit fluky because uh, the timing, the timing was wrong. Yeah, he was. Jared missed that one. Jared, yeah. uh, Greg had a lot of information on it, you know, but but uh, Jeff maybe didn't, and so maybe it felt like two guys really had a look on it, and one guy's brand new who doesn't really know. But there so, is two. You know, there's the two council like, people that are in there already, and if they want to take it back to the council, that's the way it works. Like, it's well, like I, works. I don't want anybody that's in that power board thinking I'm like trying to tell them what to do like that's not what I'm trying to do I mean this whole thing's brand new to everybody this whole thing's a difficult situation and I but think the reason why is um, I, I totally get your concern fresh eyes we need that it's all good the problem is if we if you have the council over something like the power board every four years it's going to be a terrible learning curve oh, like, yeah. terrible because there's so much information like you said they're big decisions you're not talking a garbage truck you're talking a $3 million part or a $3 million project that all that we do is say, yeah, let's think about that. Take like really that's counsel. why that PCA thing should drive itself. That's, I mean, like in a way, like it takes, it takes the heat off of. Do you remember what it was when we first initiated it? What was the under collection? No, what the people. The percentage? Four cents. Yeah, the percentage. It was well, six. It was Just, like 6.2. Yeah. Uh, like it should have been at 6.2 and we six or seven, held it at seven, four yeah, four something cents. like that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why we went down to four. Which kind of. Which I get that. Now, now but then if you go back through the whole chart, it should have been 
basically two oh, and a half times. Oh, yeah, oh, two cents, two cents, two cents, two cents. Like we're talking a drastic drop off, and we still left it at four. So like because of not, collection. Because of the collection. That's my whole point. That's so like at what point are we going to continue making this mass this collection? Or are we going to call it a day? Yeah, at what point know? do we feel we're healthy and yeah. move on? I, I, yeah. And then that's and for you. The that's study, it says how much that number is. Yeah. So as soon as we get to that number, we just felt like, hey. Yeah. There. But, but, but do we need to get to that number? I, we're not unhealthy. Yeah, that, the people we paid to do the survey, they said yes. But yeah. they're not the ones making the decision. You guys are. Of course, they feel like, as an outside consultant, like, you've lost money. You need to recoup this. Well, yeah. That's you all's decision. Well, do you know how much four cents is a percentage of your utility bill? Well, four cents versus our kilo, our, our residential kilowatt hour rate would be, well, what's four cents divided by? Thirty-five point oh four. There you go. Say thirty to forty percent. That's pretty, pretty That's a hefty, lot. hefty. Yeah, but who, who's to say that we weren't given a really, really good deal two years ago? Well, and if you look at my presentation from last council. We're dead center on where we should be rate-wise with a three-cent PCA. With but but three cents. here's my fight with the uh, lost money is like citizens, everyone that pays the power bill has already paid that money. It's like so now we're paying it back again. We're double dipping on it in my book. But, and I know what you're going to say about it, but it's like it, it's how did that money get in the power board from the or in the in the power bank account but, from the people that pay the power bills. So what? we had the money, you know, Parowin is a business, Parowin lost money, sometimes you lose money, you know. Well, yeah, like as a business like, owner, you write it off as a bad Why are we going back at debt? it and making everybody pay it again is the way I look at it. Well, I, I, and that's I the over part. I get the PCA, it, we yeah. can't lose money selling Yeah, I, I don't, you know? obviously I don't agree with everybody's paying it again because I mean, our, our normal rate was based off of a typical Fifty to eighty thousand dollars UAMPS bill, and our December bill was two hundred thirteen thousand. Yeah, yeah. So that's a huge loss. So that's what we were looking at. And but now the PCA is in place to where that shouldn't happen again. Yeah. You know. So I mean, I get your point. And I, and well, I, and I, nobody I, knew. I just want direction. How the power cost was going to fluctuate and you know where right. it spiked so rapidly. Yeah. I mean, that caught everybody. Exactly. Oh. And now this vehicle is in place to. To handle that, if it right. happens again, hopefully it doesn't. You know, I mean, power costs have trended down, but we're still not where we were two and a half years ago when we were having seventy, eighty thousand yeah. power bills. And our last power bill was like one hundred eight. Let me just add that, as far as the rate goes, it, it, our problem was is our study, our power rate study, we were way behind. Like we should, we use a power company like us, we should do it every three to five years. Oh, yeah. Well, it had been 12, and then it had been 8, and then it had been, well, we finally figured out, oh, yeah, this isn't going to work. So that's, a lot of that came from that. A lot of it, the bumping up last year, not only did the uh, rate spike, obviously, but... Um, but it's also not the customer's fault. No, absolutely not. Right, so. but they are the ones using the power that we're buying at higher rates. But it's still not know? their fault. Right, but the it's rates not weren't adjusted either, on the way. Or the power yeah. department. Not the either. cities either. Uh, it you is the mean? city's fault. No, it's 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 a uh, it's a uh, city should have checked. Lack of coal. It's uh, I mean. Well, I'm saying that, yeah, lack obviously. Of hydro. Not, but it's still we should have you checked know? this. It should have been checked. Well, we were. I mean, I was. I, well, I watched that bill monthly. But the time it takes to get approval to do a study through Power Board, then approve through Council, give them the mass amounts of information that they want, takes months to implement. And so, I mean, but like oh, if yeah. we had this two years ago, oh, it, yeah. the, we would have just kicked it onto the customers and we'd have been sitting pretty. And we have it in place now. So, I, I mean, I get your point that let's follow because while yeah, you have it. Yeah, I think we need to follow it. Yeah, I mean, Start. we have like it. I said, it's all it. about under collection. If you want to address under collection or losses, then we need to have the PCA adjust on decisions of what's going to, if, if we want to forget losses, follow the spreadsheet. We have the vehicle in place to do that, and things move forward, and we, we are ready to absorb these if we have them Correct. next time. You know? and, and honestly, I, I mean, uh, talking to Chris Lund that developed the study, who also did our rate study, um, he, you know, if we always have like a four cent PCA, what would probably be best is to just raise our regular rate. Say we go up one and a half to where that gives us a two cent PCA or whatever it be, and that way um, it's collecting the same, you know, as far as revenue. 
but you just don't see the PCA dollar as much. You know, it'd be the it's it's uh, the same comparison, same dollar figure, but. Which animal do you want? So really, I think it's just under collection. It, it, that's what drives the increase of the PCA for, off of the spreadsheet. So. So, and again, I told you that I I really don't care. I just want something that works. <clears throat> Would you, Dave? Uh, sorry, Dave. I got to be careful. Councilman Harris, so that M Councilman Burton doesn't get confused. Um, would you uh, be comfortable leaving the power board in charge of the PCA if they if they are also given the direction to just strictly follow it, or or would you rather like really like to have it in this body and then make the motion to strictly follow it? Or no, I'm good with like them do? doing it as long as we, to me, we follow the chart. We we have the vehicle. So, we have the yeah. spreadsheet. We've paid all that money to do it. Let's let's do what I'm it's with supposed that. to do. I, I, yeah. I just want direction, and I want to make sure that my department doesn't continue to lose money. Right. Obviously, exactly. my job. That's yep. what I'm here. You know. But and, I'm and, I, and you do a great job. So. And I think following it, um, one of the things that could be considered, um, we could go to a 12-month smoothing average rather than a six-month smoothing average. The whole reason why we're not following it right now. I want to remind everybody why we're not following it exactly. It was because when we very first calculated it, it was 6.2. Yeah, you're trying to ease the board. And the power board was like, that's going to be, that's going to hit hard. Yeah. So let's not fully implement it. So the first month we implemented it, we actually restrained it. But that actually dug us in a deeper hole. And so then, and then the fix was to go longer. So I'm saying if we follow it, we got to go, it, we follow it when it's low, we follow it when it's high, because if you just, every time it goes high, you restrict it, and then you let it go when it's going to go low again, then, I'll, then you're just going to financially start to impact the power company, and then there's no point in having it if it, doesn't, if it isn't allowed to work. So if, if we are going to let it flow, then it, we just can let it flow, and if it's five, but I, I really don't think we're going to see those kind of spikes. That was kind of an anomaly. Um, one that we were all reacting to the best we could, but yeah. I really don't think it's yeah. going to really flow a lot. Really, last, I think, August and September were our two cheapest power bills from UAMPS last year, and I think probably June, July were next. So we're getting into the better, Correct. you know, the next six months, I think. Better price. Be, I mean, but the problem is right now, yeah, yeah, the, PCA is, the PCA is based off the previous six months, which are high. So we may see a 3.3 .3 or a 3.5 the yeah. next month, but then as those higher bills kick off with a lower bill, that it'll come back down. Correct. So, you know. so but, but, but to Jeremy's original point, to make the decision to follow it, if that's the way that we wanted to go, means that you are forever walking away from the under collection, which is your point you're okay with. Financially, it's not going to cripple the power company. It's, we take that blow and we move on. Um, and but we would we would write that off essentially if you guys are comfortable with that. That's what we would have to do if we just say we're going to stick with it as of today. Because as of right now, we're still trying to collect that past under collection. So just be clear that that's what we're talking about. That's kind of the issue that you said is the element elephant in the room. Yeah, and if the PCA says it should be 6.3 cents, you are okay with putting that back on the customers, which and when it says four it's cents one 35 percent, 6.3 is probably 65 percent. It may go to zero. Can't, can't I mean, you just exactly. top it at 4 percent? Well, you could, but then you're losing money. Your power department is yeah. becoming crippled. Yeah, you can't. That's what we did, and that's kind of why we're in the boat we're at, because we yeah. didn't collect. Uh, so uh, this yeah. is a, as a scenario, uh, comparison. Santa Clara had a PCA in place years ago. Their March, not this March, last March, 2023, PCA was 7.8 cents. They kicked that to their customers. Now they're under a penny on their PCA, but they chose to bite the bullet up front. And yeah, it could be hurt one month and be great yeah. the next. You know, yeah. like you, you don't. So know. just as long as we're good with passing it on when it's low, we pass it on when but it's again, high. But again, if you, if you did a 12-month PCA, it's going to flatten it a little more, which is kind of what we're doing. It's just that we're kind of manually stretching out our six months. Yeah. We're like overriding what the model says. But if you take a we could do a 12 month, and then if you had a spike, it's right. going to spread that spike out over a longer time. But if you do start a 12 month right now, your PCA would be higher next month than a six month because, because it's going to be looking back to those high months. Six months power bills, power purchase costs were higher. 
And, and I just don't feel it's, it's right for the city to, to be out that money. If this would cripple the city and hurt the city, I'd be all for saying, yeah, we got to pay it back. But it's not going to hurt it at all. Anybody else have a comment on that? If we done a study as to how bad, I mean, it will hurt the city if we took the loss. I think Dan is pretty in tune with the finances. I mean, if you look at last year's audit um, for the power department, I think that was probably the only year in the history of the power department that we were negative right. net cash or whatever it's term like five, they use. 500,000, 600,000 write-off, isn't it? It's the right off, like 590 right now. And, and, and write off, I don't want to use that word because that's a very specific Not accounting really right term. But right. Just colloquially, I can never say that word. It is a colloquialism. I cannot say it. I apologize. We are writing it off because we're forgetting it. We're not using it as a tax write off. But the number is like 600,000 is where we still sit on that post collection. As far as the way the, the year ended up, it was the first year that the power company, because usually in, in, in an enterprise one, you want enterprise fund, you want to make a certain amount of money every year, um, especially when your city is growing and you have more assets that you have to maybe replace. You know, you got to have good fund balances and things like that. Yep. If we were completely paid off all of our debt and all of that stuff, then maybe we don't want to keep increasing fund balances. And maybe at that point we would look to flatten everything. Um, but we still have a lot of debt. The power company has a lot of debt. We need to have healthy cash reserves. I did the presentation. Remember I talked about our bond rating? We're at about like a B bond rating. We're not at an A. Um, this will not take us to a C or a junk. C isn't a bond rating. You know what I mean? Junk bond status, you know, triple B or whatever. But, um, but we could absorb that loss. Because essentially with the loss already happened. If you want to know where the power company was with the loss, just look at the financial statements mm -hmm. because they ended June of 2023. Power company is still okay, and we did see that little bit of a dip in it. And the reason why it was a little bit, and it's not this massive amount, because it's what would have happened had this not happened, the power company would have made X amount of money. The difference between what we would have made and what we did make is the difference. It's just that we didn't it didn't have net negative, you know, net income of 500,000. It had negative income of like 100,000. Well, we would have probably made 400,000 last year otherwise, or 500,000, whatever the number is. But we can absorb it if you wanted to. Um, it's just yeah, steering the um, steering the company, right? Just yeah. well, I think the mechanism is still there. That like the, you know, it's subject to the advice and consent and the approval of the city council, and we. I think the consensus of the city council was to do this gradually, not hit the citizens real heavy, but to be conservative and to try and you know make it so it wasn't quite yeah. so impactful. And I think that's I think is what the consensus is. And that's why we brought it down to three. Right. We low yeah, because it was proposed six whatever. Yeah. And then. And then a few months ago, power board decided to lower it from four to three because. The Spreadsheet was saying right. 3.7. Yeah. Now it's looking at 3, 3.3-ish, 3 and I put my numbers in. But like, but, the, but like, say less than say half a cent is a lot of money to to a large user. A large user. It is. The store, my shop. Most businesses, yeah. Yeah, all those big shops, like yeah. that half but a it, cent is a it, ton of money. At the same yeah. time, if those business users yeah. didn't use so much, our power bill from UMS would be lower too. But, but yes, it right. is a, it's a it's big deal. Over collecting, so it's a, bi it's a big deal, you know. We throw around cents like it's not thousands yeah. to some people. <laughs> so it's Jared, a lot yeah, of money. Mason coming to our council on the 25th, is that going to be <clears throat> something that he could contribute to this discussion with his perspective and advisement on that? Because I know we talked about, you know, making a 1% adjustment would, it's kind of a hybrid model. Would that allow us to continue to recoup some of the loss? Or yeah. either way, even if we made the 1% adjustment and then followed the chart, would we still be potentially, you know, writing the entire, well, yeah. so moving, I, moving past what is behind us. So I think Mason's biggest, Mason's the CEO of UAMS who will be here in two weeks, but he, he's going to talk more on, on our purchase costs from UAMS and our projects that we're in. He's not going to know Perlin City's financials. He's, I mean, he's going to know that he's, he, his company has sent pretty large power bills to us, to most of Utahns, you know, and he doesn't like that either. But that's not all in their control either. But and they don't want to get into individual city, right? But he will be able to talk about upcoming projects, 
where Parowan is currently and what has caused our increases, uh, you know, but okay, so as far as the PCA, he's going to okay. be out of that realm, but yeah. Anything else? Take it to what? It's a work meeting, okay. so if, right. if you wanted to make a motion to bring something, an action item forward, we could bring it to the next one. Or, no, not a motion. No. If you had, wanted to say, hey, will you please put this on the next one, then we could, um, if, if, if the council wanted to. But so I guess, yeah, there's nothing to take action on. My, my bad. Thanks, Kelly. For <laughs> good discussion. Thank you. She keeps, she keeps Thank you. me good. Appreciate you. Thanks, Jeremy. Thank you. I do want to bring it to an action meeting. Okay, for the 25th or for yeah. the? You can do, yeah. Or after the next. Let's go after the 25th so we can see the next bill. So the the first meeting yeah. in May. Yeah. Okay. All right, moving now to item number 11 on the work meeting. This is the short-term rental code consideration. Um, and Dan. Okay, I got this. This is actually going to be a short item. Um, the intent with this is to um, start the process. Um, if, we, if we start the process to look at adjusting our code, um, it allows us to basically put a six month stay on, on, on any, anything that comes in because we're looking at it. Basically what we're, our intention is the, the, the planning commission wants to look at this um, and I will explain why, what's going on. Um, and anything that comes in in the meantime, we can say you got to press the pause button until Planning Commission makes a recommendation, comes back to City Council, and we make a decision. We can only put a moratorium on these things while we're, uh, while we're looking at our code for six months, but we can do that. The reason why um, it was suggested that we actually do this and put this moratorium on is because we are seeing a lot of new short-term rentals um, right now, we don't have any short-term rental code. It's basically if somebody wants to operate a, um, a, a business in their house and it happens to be a short-term rental, as long as they follow our code, I approve it. We don't have anybody pr protesting. If we have a protest, just like any home-based business, it comes to planning commission and then they make a judgment call. As long as there's no protest, it's administrative and I grant it. I've been granting, um, I'd say maybe one a month. A proposed that are licensed. We have a lot more than eight out there, but we have eight that since we since we passed the TRT and we said that you have to get a business license if you're going to do this, um, we have eight. And wh how long ago did we do that? So not quite once a month we've been approving new short-term rentals. Um, we're a small town. You can do the math. I you know I, I think at one point the uh, county. TRT, uh, the tourism told us how many how many short-term rentals we have. I'm not saying short-term rentals are good or short-term rentals are bad. I'm saying that if we're going to do any regulation, we need to do it now because once you have a whole bunch of people that are now invested in short-term rentals, that's not the time to go in and say you can't do it. They've already put money. They've got mortgages that are, that are backed by these. It gets really hard to then... Um, pull the curtain out for, or the, the rug out from under some, of somebody who's running a business. That's just not really fair. So if we're going to do something, we should do it now and we'll leave the discussion of what should be done or shouldn't be done to the process. We'll have a public hearing in planning commission after they've talked about it for some time. It'll come back to city council. I do expect this to be controversial. You're going to have strong opinions on both sides, you know, from property rights to businesses to at what point is it eating into home affordability if you take your, some of your rental properties and they, they're turning into a business? Um, cities, uh, we were going to look at this really strong a while back, and our legal advice at the time, which was good advice, was this thing hasn't been litigated. Cities are getting sued. Just stay away, with, away from it until there's some case law, until there's some cities that have, that have gone through litigation, and they've, they've kind of come up with some policies that will, that will hold if they want to. Um, some cities that are that are either re that are either um, oh what do you want to call it resort communities or shoulder communities to resort communities um, th it's been like a massive issue here it hasn't been that massive issue yet 
but I think we're slowly getting to the point where um, it could become an issue where all of a sudden all the rentals in town are are um, short-term rentals. There's not really any long-term rentals. We don't have a lot of um, affordable housing in Parowan. Um, we don't have very many rentals even available right now. And so if we're going to have workers and a, an economy and stuff, they got to have a place to live. And it, yet at the same time, if somebody wants to do what they want with their property and have and have an investment and all that stuff, you can see why there's why there's different um, views on this thing. So we'll talk about it. Planning Commission will look at it. We'll come back. Um, I'm not going to really get into the details any more than that, but um, there's lots of ideas. Do you limit number two to certain radius so you don't, you don't get too many too close to each other so a whole subdivision doesn't become rentals? Do you say there's only so many that are allowed in the city, first come, first serve? Do you say it's wide open? Do you say that they have to be an owner occupier? You know, that way you don't have, there's a lot of corporations, large corporations, they'll just buy a house, put it into the system and a, a property management company takes it and it just becomes a rental. That's a house that comes off the market for a family to live in because it's now that thing. Do you want to say, all right, we, we want the residents of Parowan to be able to rent out a room or rent out their basement, but we feel a little differently about corporations. Or, you know, there's all these different kind of things that we can and can't do. We have a lot of good code that we can borrow from other cities that have successfully done this. Um, it's going to come down to your principles and, and weighing these, these, these uh, you know, conflicting interests. So, anyways, the only reason I'm putting it on the agenda is so that we can officially let Planning Commission, direct Planning Commission to take a big swing at it. <clears throat> While they're discussing this, they will also be discussing ADU code. ADU stands for Additional Dwelling Unit. Auxiliary. When you think about a mother-in-law apartment or house, um, we've had a lot of requests right now in the housing market that we're in. People want to build a little casita behind their house. People want to have another residential unit on their property. Um, even in an R2 zone, you can't put a second residential unit. You can build a duplex, one building, but you can't have two separate residential units. We have gone the rounds. This is exactly what our code reads. So the question is, is say in an R2 zone, do we want to be able to let somebody build a casita behind their house? That's the density that's, that's contemplated, but our code won't allow it. What about in, um, we're already forced by new state law to do addition, um, internal additional dwelling units. If you want to convert your garage to an apartment, you can do it. Utah law is forcing us to do that. Planning Commission has been working through that code for three, four months. Um, we want to make sure our code is compliant with state code. They do allow us to regulate that within certain bounds, and we're working through that. We're almost done with the definitions, and then we're going to get into, of the ten things that we can regulate, what do we want to regulate or not. That will come to you shortly. But that's internal dwelling units, additional dwelling units. We, as we're talking about short-term rentals, we realize we got to talk about additional dwelling units outside the home. Um, and, and we do get a lot of requests in planning and zoning, people that, that want to either um, have their kids live there, their, their mother who's now a widower, a widow lived there, or they want, to turn a, they want a rental property or something like that. Where and under what circumstance would we be willing to allow it? We're going to have these two con conversations concurrently, additional dwelling units and short-term rentals. Can I ask you a question? Yep. So when you're doing, when we're talking about the additional dwelling units, where does the water portion of that come That's in? That's a really great question that has to be answered. Because you're essentially adding a whole new yep. living space. Yep. Are they going to be? I'll tell you the way that we do it, the way that we've looked at it up to this point. Let's say somebody puts in a garage and it's a separate building because the question is, wait a minute, at what point do we charge a second connection or an right. impact fee for that? And the way the city has looked at it, that if you're going to connect to the, ex to the house's utilities and you're not going to upsize anything, you're within the connection, a three-quarter inch connection or a one-inch connection. You haven't actually, you might be using more, but that's no difference than a big house to a small house. It, once you tap onto the main with a separate connection, a separate lateral, a separate meter, right. at that point we're going to charge it. That's the way we've been doing it now, but that's just administrative because that's the only fair way that I could come up with to do it. If you're going to if you're going to have a second connection to the power with another transformer, we're going to charge you as though it's a new house, even if it's just a barn, right? But when it comes to additional dwelling units, it absolutely we should discuss that. 
What about setbacks? Can you only do it in the backyard? Can you do them side by side? What about the size of the yard? Like that's all the stuff that wow. that I know Larry is chomping at the bit to get through. It's Good not job, super Larry. Easy. I do not envy you. <laughs> so that's why it's there. Any other questions? We just wanted to kind of basically hit the pause button while we talk about it. Um, we want to have a good, robust public discussion as well. And, and, and there will be um, people that are happy with the result at the end and, and people that aren't. Um, but if we have a good process, then we can come up with some good code. You have some places like Santa Clara, um, you know, up, right up against Zion, where they're like, they're like, we're at crisis stage. They talk about it all the time, the mayors and everybody. They're like, we're at crisis stage. We, the state, you need to do something about this. Mm -hmm. So we hope to basically come up with something that works for us with our brand of how we want it to look before the decision has been made for us because we didn't do anything at all. So that's what we wanted to do. All right. Okay. And with that, we'll move on. So be thinking about those things. Um, and we will get, you know, obviously a communication from the community, and that's what we're asking for as well. Um, into <coughs> item number thir uh, 12, it's the Perwin City Background Check Policy. Dan Justin and Chief Adams are here to talk about that. Okay, so we don't actually have a policy about background checks. Um, and we need to have one if we're going to do background checks. I think most everybody would agree that it's a good idea to do background checks. Maybe not of every employee, but, but employees um, um, we have on here that we're going to do background checks um, for police officers, coaches, crossing guards, pool employees, think showers and stuff like that, uh, firefighters, treasurer, recorder, and human resources director. The reason why they're getting picked on is because they handle sensitive they're handling social security numbers, they're handling credit card numbers, they're handling um, things like that. We don't want to have somebody that they look great and, and we think they're the greatest person ever and we know them, but guess what? 20 years ago they were stealing money in Rhode Island and now they're here and they've rehabbed their image, but we want to know that they were doing that. Or if, they ha or if they're on the uh, sexual registry or if they are, you know, they're a pyro and they're, fi they're wanting to be on our police department or our fire department or they have a problem with pills, and now they're going into people's homes to, to, to help with the elderly to lift somebody, and they were walking right past you know, medicine cabinets. There's a lot of reasons why we want to we wanna know. Not everybody needs to be background checked, but we, we, when we were talking about it, um, I, um, we said, well, what is our policy? And we actually didn't have one. Um, and we have been doing background checks for different reasons, but we didn't have a policy and we didn't have when we do it and how we do it. So this, I don't know if everybody had a chance to read it. I can go through it if you want, but this was, um, like all good things, um, we found uh, a policy and we, we made it work for Perwin, the, for our circumstances and all of that stuff. Um, Callie actually found the basis that started this one was something we got from Davis County. We took all of the things out that didn't apply at all to us. Um, we, we really made it more, deal with the way w the process that we actually follow and I'll just talk you through the process basically we have our, our police department uh, we have a new hire we say hey can you guys look into this they do a criminal background check you'll see on here that this says criminal records drug testing fingerprinting credit report verification of application information driving records reference we don't do all of that right now but this allows us to do as, as much of that as we feel we need to at a minimum, we want to do a criminal background check. We want to see, do they have misdemeanors? Do they have felonies? Do they, what have they done um, that, that may be actually a concerning thing? We do random drug testing all the time on our employees, on certain employees, um, more so than others, as we're recommended to. And everybody that gets hired has to go through a drug test. So to some degree, we're going to do more of this. To other degrees, we're going to do less. It, in order to become the treasurer, you have to literally have a bond. Uh, the, the, the city pays for a, um, and a what do they call it? Uh, not an indemnity bond. There's a specific name for it that we have to have. And so if they steal a bunch of money um, because they're in a position maybe they could, then it actually protects the city and the city citizens from that. So depending on the job, there's, there's, this looks a little bit differently. But anyway, so after the police department does that, they're going to fill out a form that says, yep, they passed. Um, 
human resources, um, the, the department that's hiring won't necessarily see all of the background. The police department will just know, oh, there's a concern with this thing. The concerns that can be considered, this is the criteria under five, number of convictions, severity of convictions. I mean, if, if somebody was smoking a cigarette when they were only 16, does that mean that they can't ever work for the police department? Would you ever get any officers if they never had any misdemeanors or <laughs> speeding tickets? Infractions, no, for sure, and even small misdemeanors. Yeah. Uh, length of time. There are some things that happen, and if there's a long enough length of time, we're still going to go ahead and hire them. Um, you know, I think that if somebody um, wanted to wanted to work around children, or they wanted that we wouldn't want anything ever and of certain things to be on there, or or if they had a problem, you know, committing fraud and stealing money, it doesn't matter, doesn't matter how long it is. We're never going to hire them to be our treasurer, right? Other things, it's like, okay, when they were juvenile, they did some boneheaded stuff, and now they're 30, and they don't have anything like that since. We'd probably approve it, right? That's why length of conviction is important. Addy, jump in at any time. I'm just trying to get through this stuff, so. Oh, you're good. Security sensitivity of the position. I think I've talked about that. Relation between the job duties of the position and the nature of the conviction, right? That's important. Preservation of the safety and security of the city, its citizens, employees, and property, and any other factors mandated by state or federal state, state law. So anyways, that's pretty much the process. We'll do a background check. If everything is good, they fill out a form and give it to Callie, which puts it in the personnel file. If there is a problem, at that point it gets stopped and it gets reviewed. Um, police chief, human resources, the department head that's looking at it, probably myself, and say, wait, is this a problem? And at that point we would then turn down the application. Um, and it, we'll do this for volunteers too, if they're in one of those volunteers. And the last thing I wanted to say is if at any given time, and this is in the policy, if they say, no, 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 you're not authorized to give me a background check, we say, okay, that's, that's totally fine, but you can't have the position, right? This gives, this protects us for denying somebody, they can't sue us. Um, and also if the person demands a copy of their background check, then they can get a copy of it. And that's in state law under background checks. I'm surprised we don't have one to begin with. A policy? Yeah. Yeah. Me too. I mean, really. I thought we yeah. did. We, we've always done them on our officers and they're, they're very in depth. It'll be as in depth as this policy is plus. Um, but yeah, I was I was surprised to hear we didn't either. It's one of those things that we've been we've been carrying on as though we had a policy. We just right. didn't actually yeah. have one. We've done we've done drug tests on all the new hires. That's what I said. They've uh, implemented it, just parts. haven't had the policy. We've never we've never checked backgrounds, criminal backgrounds, or and and you're not going to catch everything because not everyone has a criminal background that's doing bad things, but. It's a little bit of safety for the city. Yep. It, it also protects us from lawsuits from an employee. It protects us from lawsuits from anybody on the outside that said you guys didn't do your due diligence. Yep. Um, you, didn't, you didn't background check this person, and now they've, in their official role, did X, Y, Z, and now I'm going to sue the city. Right. All right. Any questions from the council? Bring it. No. So we'll I just think it's a need. We need to get yeah, it. Yeah, let's bring it back. So bring it back on the 25th yes. agenda, yes. agenda Callie. Is. All right. Ex excellent. Thank you. Thank you for your work on that. Thanks, Andy. Thank you. All right. We're going to hop over to Zoom. And so the reason this is on the agenda is we're talking a lot about better communication through our website and um, citizen engagement tools and things like that. We actually have legislation that's requiring us to make adjustments to what we provide on our website that we don't currently have a tool to provide. Um, we had a call today from Jones and DeMille. They've kind of tried to fill that gap for cities with a product, um, but it really is just going to kind of be a patch to what we already have. So right now we have Civic Plus. Um, the tool from Jones and DeMille is uh, Civic Pro. Um, I don't know if you want to say what needs to happen by September or October that we need to accomplish, but we're, more and more we're, we're kind of seeing a deficit in the tool that we have with what we have to follow 
um, legislation and things, and then also a deficit in, in, in communication with the community. And so as this process has kind of been unfolding, uh, we had that one group, we had a presentation from Poly Platform. I just kind of got the beat from the council, that majority council, I think three of you at, at least, maybe a couple other of you just mentioned, you know, didn't even, even say anything, but three of you did say that was neat, I liked that. So I thought, you know, when I was approached by um, Thrillshare, which is kind of a fun name, right? And Matt Sloan, I was like, this product kind of does everything we need to do. And then from a pricing perspective, it actually came in about where we were and maybe even a little less than where we are with the product we have now. So he's here to give us a presentation. Um, he's very personable, but like most fun people, he does like to talk. So I told him <laughs> to keep it short, that just hit the high points and to talk about his clients in Utah, because Utah likes to see Utah. But um, he'll give us an introduction to what he has to offer us for a communication platform for our residents and then also web tools for our city. Hey, thanks. Thanks so much, Molly. And, and, um, I'm Sloan, and just very excited to, uh, to share go through with you guys today and um, appreciate the, the time this evening to um, I'll allow us uh, a little bit of time for questions at the end, too. But uh, certainly, Oh, I forgot to mention Anna. So I talked to Sloan first, and then Anna's been struggling a bit with the rec program and expanding that. So she spent some time with Sloan as well. So they went back and forth with what she needed to carry out her job responsibilities. And after I said, I think this is good, you know, what do you think? And then she's like, I think it's good too. And she's also been trying to kind of figure out how to use what we have and has been hitting some roadblocks. So I forgot to mention that it's been through two of our, you know, through me and then also through our rec director. I forgot about you in a meeting, so that was good. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, okay. And we've got some great uh, ideas and application uh, to, um, and uh, you know, really starting today, we've had over 2,000 of these conversations with city leadership. Oh, and, you know, we keep hearing that things are going to change. There's a lot of competition that you're facing as a community these days. Right? It's been more important than ever to Okay, let me, it probably, now you can. Yeah, Dan, can you allow a screen share for me? Yeah, I just clicked it on so that you can, but when you first started, you couldn't. Frustrated at this point. 
Reaver a document. I wanted to find that form that I needed, uh, minutes and agendas. I have those all right here where I can navigate to and just click away. And now with that contact that I need to reach out to, somebody from the Parks Department, my favorite contact in the city, is now just going to click all right. So far, there's a friend in the city that we also work with, and you know you have that great experience when it's easy to find an event, a contact, submit a form, you're invited to come back. Now you start to have a habit around using the app every day. The most exciting element here is this live feed. So it's kind of like a social media feed, it feels familiar, easy to scroll. There's no likes and comments section here in the live feed. And that's by design. Just your dedicated message of a community for positive stories, for important updates. And not that one on the Facebook algorithm saying we're finishing a political rant in this week's paper cat video. Now the great things are all right here at the click or put it in the app that I'm coming to visit every day. I'm seeing the positive stories, the hard work that's being put into the community, uh, things that I want to share.
really easy to navigate. They have great images or a video to show <coughs> All right, we should probably move to questions. If you're comfortable with, with us moving there, I think we've probably uh, seen what we need to yeah. see. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Does council have any questions about this? I'm wondering about the cost. So it, ca it comes in, and that's even why I had him come to the meeting, um, is that it actually comes in a little under what we're paying annually, but there would be a setup cost. Um, I know that in talking to Jones and DeMille about patching and what we need to meet legislation, there's also a cost associated with that annually and also a setup fee that is, has a range to it. And so it's, and really we're getting a new URL, we have to move to .gov, we can't be .org anymore, we're getting right. an email platform, we're addressing all of these things right now. And we can, uh, we can keep going with what we have. I mean, there, the only sense of urgency is we're going to have to do something to meet the legislation by September, which means we're going to have to buy a product to, to almost like tack on to what we have. And Jones and DeMille doesn't do websites. We'd keep what we have with that subscription. We'd have to add another subscription, and then we'd have to add another setup fee. So really just vetting it is, is more what I'm about. If we don't care about the citizen communication piece and we don't care kind of about the whistles and bells. Well, I think that's been the biggest concern that I have had is the lack of communication. And I feel like we're communicating, we're communicating, but we're not obviously we're probably just not doing it in an effective way that the public feels that we are effectively communicating. It's, it's not user friendly either. You know, exactly. um, it's got to be like, easy to use. And I like this a lot better be where you can, like you had me at, <laughs> um, when he first clicked that one and it, he was going to an event or whatever, the very first thing. And then he had to, it went to, the web page and I was like dude I would have been out of there and he said the same thing like mm -hmm. you lost me and I was like yeah that's exactly what I was thinking you lost me this seems very easy it'd be easy for like if Callie wanted to post something you would just put it in there and it would go she wouldn't have to go to five different things and oh crap I spelled that word wrong in this section it it just seems very easy user-friendly like mm -hmm. I'm not well I am computer savvy but it would be easy for me to use too. <laughs> I think it'd be easy for any of us to use. But so, Mayor, did I understand correctly? You said it would be cost less than what we have so the now. The annual is, but then we would have to pay a setup fee, and so we'd have to budget for a setup fee for it. Okay. okay. I talked to Dan about it after we talked to Jones and Demille today, and because Callie had said, "Why are you bringing this to the meeting?" and you know, I want to help everyone understand why I wanted to bring this to the meeting. I don't want to keep working on this stuff if we don't really, you know, we're just like, mm -hmm. we're good where we are. We'll just stick with doing what we do. Um, Anna's had a hard time getting updates done, had a hard time working with and talking to our current provider. Uh, they've told us they're pretty backlogged and, and things like that. So I feel like we're at a place if we wanted to do something, we could do it now because we have to add something on with Jones and DeMille. Okay, so um, another question I have with the website, adding it or building it into the website, is that like an additional portion, or does that just come all? It's the package. You know, it, is it's it part the of the package? Is the initial fee. 
Yes, it's the package, and that's the other thing is when I okay. said to Jones and DeMille, well, could you also build us a website since you have to do this other stuff? And they're like, we don't do websites. Like, you'd have to find a website provider. So, so no, what is Jones and DeMille going to do for us? They're creating um, all of the required. And, Larry, you might be able to speak to this better, but it has to be done by September. Do you want to come up and say what we have to have done? And it doesn't work with our current website. So it has to be an additional product that we find somewhere and attach it to to be in compliance. I'm not sure what Oh, and Dan had to leave. So just to excuse Dan, they're having... So are we talking about the rewrite from the, of the subdivision code? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so by the end of the year, um, well, we've already entered into a contract with the uh, Hansen Group to rewrite our subdivision code. That has to be done by the end of the year. Okay. Yeah. And okay. so I'm guessing that what we're talking about now is we have to have this capability. Oh, yes, we have to have certain capability in this subdivision code. There are requirements that the state says you have to provide this to the developers and that to the developers. And, and so they have to be, go on, it, be able to go online and find these things. Easily. Oh, I was like, how in the crap is this going to circle around to rewriting the subdivision code? I was Sorry. lost <laughs> for like two, two seconds. Okay. Yeah, that's it. So that, I mean, just to that, that makes sense. There, but that's the end of 24 this year. Yeah, yeah. the end of that's this year. That's correct. So for them to do that, it's going to cost just numbers 1,200 or something, and then somewhere between 2,500 and 4,000 for us to, for them to um, do the different things they need to do to even connect it to what we already have. So then it starts to open up to, then we're going to have this cobbled together thing where they're going to click on this, it's going to take them out of the website, it's going to take them over to here, um, and then we're still having a conversation with how we're going to communicate better with the, the public, you know, even the Penguin Dam, I mean, things like this. People are looking around on heroin uncensored, you know? I like, know. That's kind of becoming our platform. It really so is. It's kind of not a great platform it's not, for it's positive like, communication. And it's not accurate information. For public service announcements kinds of information. Yeah. So that's what brought us to this meeting today. And... And then, you know, of course, it's the whole deal of, like, if we're going to do this, it, it can't just be, it's not administrative because in all likelihood to switch over, we're going to have to do a budget adjustment. But then if it didn't cost anything to do the setup, I'm like, Sloan, can you just waive the setup? And then we can just make this administrative. It's like, no, you have to pay us to do the setup. Jones and oh, come on, Sloan. If we have to go to another <laughs> provider, they'll pay, you know, charge us to build our website. And, you know, unless you guys have an intel and can just get someone to do it for us for free. Um, so anyway, that's kind of why we're here at this meeting tonight, is deciding, because we've got to be moving on this. Like, we have to be making decisions, making those migrations, doing those things with what we're going to do. And if we can bring it in under what we're paying, you know, we could, as a council, just say that's part of what we're doing. It's an administrative decision. But because we're going to have to build something new, I'm thinking, why wouldn't we also bring in this community engagement tool and then have the really easy way to do the updates, the alerts? I mean, to me, it's even more than, yeah, it's nice and a farmer's market and there's fun things going on. It's like if we really did need to do emergency alerting, yes, we have. There's a lot. We more. have, but there's a lot. And it's, you, and it's very user-friendly. Mm -hmm. If mean, it's user-friendly, I'm all for it. Right? If you can look this up on your smartphone. <laughs> or, no, he doesn't have a flip phone. He has a real phone. I have. How long would it take it to, to put something up? How, if we said we want to do this, how long would it take for us to get built in online with things? Yeah, that's, what, that's the one time development, which we do have a, a great discount for you guys in place for this time of year. Uh, so, you know, try to get ahead of our busiest season when we get closer to everybody making that last change. Um, but from signing an agreement to flipping the switch and going online, Okay, two to three months. Two years, great, maybe, but how we've done that is that we have a team of 35 human being engineers here at Howard Hall Base who handle all data migration. It's their job, and we'll actually put hands on everything and moving it over. Um, looking for um, APA compliance for links that are working. And if there's a document, a PDF that's been up there for nine years, that's something we're going to run by you guys. Doing all the nitty gritty, so to speak, while we collaborate with the team on building out a great looking app website. So, where are you based down on? Um, yeah, Sloan. We're based out of Little Rock, Arkansas. We actually Little Rock. New Year. So, you have a good support group, system, base system? We have to pay the startup before. Sorry, was that a fair question there? 
Well, I just ask if you have a good support system. You have good you know, customer service and support. Customer service, yeah. Yeah, and that is where we, we take a different approach as well. And I think if you talk to some of the communities we work with in, in Utah, with, with anybody we partner with, the, the biggest thing you'll hear is uh, our, our training and support. Um, for, for starters, that's all included in your annual cost is unlimited to you guys. We have, uh, you'll have a client success manager at CSM who's a long-term partner who will hold a monthly meeting to look at multiple testing, things like uh, ADA compliance, but also provides training for anyone needed on the team. A new team member in the middle of the year might need to brush up. Um, you have their contact and always reach out directly, give them a ring on their cell. But then on the support side, we also have uh, unlimited support group. We all share with the chat button that you may have seen. You can get a response from a real human being in typically under 60 seconds. And our average resolve time for any issue is under 15 minutes. So you have a real human being. I heard you say that, right? <laughs> okay. uh, we have someone at the podium, so I'm going to let him speak so he doesn't stand there forever. So I. I'm not sure if I understand all this, but is, so is this platform, is the intent is that it's two-way communication with the citizens? It wouldn't be open for comments. No. Um, I mean, that's not by design the way it's designed. Okay. And the other question I have is, is you, we'll still have a website that if you're at home and you're working on a computer, that you'll still have access yeah, that way. Yeah, you said this that is, they would even okay. do the website. Is that what I'm understanding, that you will do our website for us? Yes, we will build and host the website as well, and then you're updating consistently from one place until it's sure. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. It does. Yeah. I like it. Hallie, you were going to say something. I was just going to mention that um, if we move to this, he said it would take 60 to 90 days. We, we would have to give 60 days notice to Civic Plus that we don't want to go with them anymore and I was just thinking the timing was good on that I did have a question um, can you can you put the city ordinances on the website and if so can we self codify those ordinances codify. you can upload those ordinances any document style you can upload we don't have codification in house mm -hmm. that's a big part of that So, Callie, are you asking if we make a change to our ordinance, can we update the change on the ordinances that are posted on the website? Well, will our code be on the website like... Yeah, so like if you go, and I had him step me through that because I said that's our biggest concern, is, is everything that we have going to be able to be on there along with what's required by the upcoming legislation that we have to also have on by the end right. of the year? Can that all be on this and, you know, the way it's built? And so we... I mean, we could go back and look at Brigham City or Cedar Hills or something and look at the way their code's online, but it looked very similar. I mean, there are a lot of things about it that just look the same, more yeah. or less, kind of the document side of it looked very similar. But, um, and, and, you know, again, we're not making a decision tonight or anything. I'm just right. exposing you guys to this and saying, do we want to keep looking into this? And, and if we want to do this, then we are going to have to make some budget adjustments for the setup side. But then annually we'll be able to a little less and then I if you add on Jones and DeMille's product to what we're already paying well you know it makes up a, quite a bit of the difference of the setup fee so okay. I think we need to pursue it can we bring it back to an action item we can bring it back and that'll give and he'll share his contact I mean I can send you the City Council email address and share his con, uh, contact and you guys can talk to him he's a very available to set up zoom meetings and things and I mean I've how many times have I talked to you maybe like two or three and so just talk to them about any questions you have. Look around on the other sites, Cali, of course. You know, just pick all over that and just see if you see any issues or things that you want to really take a deep dive into. But we don't have to do that in tonight's meeting. This is the last item on our agenda. No, but if you'll give him our contact information and if you'll send us some, like, um, 
communities like Brigham City that you already do. That, so just I can look through them, and I'm sure others might want to look mm -hmm. through those and just see how. And if our staff has contacts in those cities, call that their staff and say, do you, do you like this? How are they with customer service? You know, or do you see any problems with the tools? Things like that. Yeah. That would help me a ton because I don't – we have different – Role. People, so yeah, you have different contacts and, and different I, contacts. Too. I think we need to move forward and look into it more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Me too. Yeah, let's bring it back. Okay, we'll yeah. bring it back on the 25th. Okay, and in the meantime, we'll do some research. Yeah, you'll be hearing from some of us. <laughs> okay. Sounds Thanks good. So much, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good night. Night. It's late. Hmm? It's late. Nine thirty. All right, we're going to move into updates from council members, and I don't remember which side I started on last time, so we'll just start with um, since Rochelle's over there doing doing the computer. We'll start with Council Member Burton. Do you have any updates for us this evening? Uh, yeah, the water board met last night, and. Uh, Basically, it was uh, they didn't want to uh, address the recommendation on the PMC. Uh, that, that's the uh, well, the state's going to reimburse people for taking out landscaping and converting green areas to zero scape and all that. And so, it's got to go through the water board is supposed to do a recommendation, then go to the planning and zoning. And then after it goes and we come up with some ordinance, it'll come back to the city council because as we discuss, there's certain criteria that has to be met and put into ordinance that we talked about before. And uh, so anyway, that'll be ongoing and it'll, you know, with the planning and zoning and the water board. And, uh, and we had kind of a, with the water board, just a refresher, uh, discussion on the groundwater management plan and uh, oh, that was in the culinary and then uh, let's see on the I guess as far as the pressurized irrigation as you know that the water is still coming on on the 17th which is Tuesday the irrigation water and um, the dry canyon project uh it's uh, we're waiting on blm they dropped the ball they didn't do their their eis and their nepa they <clears throat> we thought they were working on it found out they weren't so we're trying to put pressure on them to get that done and then the you know the recharge project we met with the uh, water related we met with the the engineers alpha and they're working to try and get design and things progressing as far as that recharge project. So that's kind of a highlight of, I guess, the water planning and zoning. Maybe as a side note to water, I think Panguitch is optimis pesim or optimistically, cautiously optimistic right now. I think things are, are stabilizing there with that dam and the on the Penguitch Lakes, so they've had to release a lot of water and do a lot of, mm -hmm. you know, ice breaking and things, but I think they're going to be okay. Uh, the planning and zoning, uh, we talked, uh, they discussed the Terrible's building permit review for the one here at exit 78, and, um, and just had a discussion on rezoning some areas out by in that, uh, Heritage Hills area for the smaller lots that were originally, you know, uh, applied for. And so there was just a discussion. There wasn't anything done there. And then there's a lot, lengthy discussion on a construction project on 155 North, 500 West. And uh, so that's going to come back, I think. And then there a lot of discussion on your accessory dwelling units and definitions of single family you know, trying to come up with some definitions and uh, and then discussion about the subdivision land use authority, which is we're going to have to have that board organized, however it's composed, whatever you decide, uh, that board's going to have to be, isn't it by the end of the year, Larry, that subdivision? Well, 
It's in conjunction with this uh, rewrite that we're having done of Title 14. Yeah, but it has to be done by the end of the year, doesn't yes, it? Yes, by the end of the year. Yeah. So the dates coincide. Yeah. But we need to have that figured out, how we're going to do it, so they can right. write it into the code. How it's going to be composed of what composition on that yes. part. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. And then uh, the county, one thing that might be of interest to the county is that they're uh, – Talking about uh, getting a, a grant for phase two of the five mile, you know, recon construction up there. So that's something that we'll want to keep up on and, and follow. So I think that's all I have for right now. Thank you. Thank you. I had the kickoff meeting with the patchwork parkway byway. Said it correctly, didn't I? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a mouthful. So happy you were there. It was great. <laughs> And they're going to do some uh, constructing of additional panels and replacement of the panels, depending on weather, if, you know, whatever. And it's going all the way from down over by KB's to Lions Park to Four Bay to Yankee to Hidden Haven to Bryan Head to Mammoth Creek. I'm going fast, can you tell? Panguish Lake and Panguish West which I can't remember where that was. It's pretty, pretty sad. But And Panguitch Garfield uh, Fairgrounds. Bet and the original quilt walkers wish they could have gotten that fast. If I was in charge of it, they would have. <laughs> <laughs> and so explain what you mean when you say the panels. So the, they have, you know, the long panels or they have the small panels on, on pipes. I guess you want to put that. And they're going to either put new ones up, double-sided, explain more, they, like when they go up, is it Hidden Haven? Mm -hmm. They're going to talk more about the vegetation and the flooding, and, mm. and they're going to do a lot of the history that's gone through there. And I can't remember how to say it. Maybe you will, Molly. Miss Messia? It's French. Scott can probably say it. <laughs> Messe Messe it's or Messia, the landmark, monument. the monument where they, the symphony wrote a piece about Parowan. Messia? Yeah, but you've heard Nancy I'm butchering it really bad, it. I can tell. I'm speaking into the microphone. I want you all to know. <laughs> we are proud. I was going to sing, but I'm not going to. Um, yes, that's how you say it. Okay. And they're going to put that up at Hidden Haven to tell the story more. Because right now it's kind of buried and nobody knows where it is, and yeah. it's really cool. Yeah. So, and I mean, a lot of this was even new to me for it, so. And our Parowan entry signs that, that are kind of faded and they're peeling. Fa there's been a lot fading because of the weather, yeah. the sun and all so that. So they're going to place. replace those. And was that the White Ledges or Hidden Haven? That, well, however you say it. It's in, it's in the White Ledge area, but they yeah. want to, because it's an area that just keeps getting nailed, right. they want to move it to a place where it gets seen. It's a little Anymore. more protected. Yeah. It's kind of arbitrarily put there it anyway. I so. can't <laughs> say it. I can take you where the original plaque is, but I can't say it. I can't either. Miss you or Miss you. Or... <laughs> Anyhow, that's, just, that's it. Perfect. Thank you. Right. That was great. Um, <clears throat> I attended the Shade Tree Committee meeting last week. Uh, Beaver Landscaping will be uh, treating, treating the trees this month. Uh, they have that all mapped out and what trees they're going to be treating. Uh, we're talked, talked about and we're looking at an urban uh, forestry grant that's available until July 1st. And this, you know, we discussed it at the meeting that it could be possibly benefit uh, the need for trees and shrubs for, uh, to cut down the wind on the future pickleball courts. Uh, so hopefully we'll find someone to assist us uh, in writing that grant. Uh, there's a lot of money that was mentioned that was part of that grant um, and then Arbor Day will be April 29th at 12:30 at uh, the library park and let's see spent yesterday being part of an interview interviewing uh, sev seven highly qualified uh, candidates for public work director oh sorry I don't know if you can hear me. that's it did you hear that okay Seven candidates. Seven. Yeah. Okay. Did you say Arbor Day is 29th? 29th, 1230 at Liberty Park, or Library Park, Liberty. Liberty. Okay. Sorry. Liberty Library. Wrong city. <laughs>
Thank you. <laughs> well, we almost had an airport board meeting, but that didn't happen. And other than that, my life was not very eventful with city stuff. But it was. <laughs> um, Dave Harris and I attended a meeting, was it yesterday? I don't even know. My whole week is like all run together. Um, we had a meeting with um, Public Works. Uh, I think it was Cope, Cope Evans was there. Matt Rhodes with UDOT, the mayor. Larry Pendleton. Yeah, Larry Pendleton, Dan Jessen, you and I, um, about putting in a sidewalk from the Grace Christian Church down to the Maple Springs subdivision. So basically, Larry Pendleton's whole field. Um, we're getting a lot of calls, a lot of stuff on the safety or the lack of safety kids getting to and from that subdivision. And it really is busy, especially if we're going to be putting in that terribles and the hotel and the RV park. It's just, it's going to get busier. So. And Larry Pendleton did say the utilities look good. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, the utilities and the sewer, all that stuff looked good. So um, I didn't attend the field trip that they did, but um, I did attend the meeting and Everybody is positive, wants to get this done, and so it's great. It's going to be good to see it happen. Um, if you guys have noticed, I think I see it more because I work at the school, but construction has started uh, for the new multi-purpose building in between the elementary and the high school. Um, I just want to thank our community for being patient with the new and the parents of school children just being patient with the new route the drop off and pick up it's different change is hard but just know that the top priority is the safety of your students like we don't want the reasons the why they decided to do it the way that they want they just don't want kids to get run over like there is a clear safety concern and those are being addressed also i wish addy was still here um his police officers have been amazing this week. They are out there every morning um, at the two new sections where the drop-off is down the side. I don't know north, south, east, west. So the other side of the school where we have made it into um, one. a one-way street. Um, that was hard for parents to grasp. Um, but today, there were like no issues. It was just, it seemed very seamless. But our police officers do need a pat on the back. They've been out there. Um, it's been great. I've been doing the crosswalk down on that bottom. Um, I think with Chief Adams yesterday, it was great. I love seeing them, and it's, it's been fun. So just be cautious that that's going to take one year to complete-ish, maybe longer, hopefully not longer. But um, some of the concerns that I've been hearing is why couldn't they have started after school got out i don't know i'm not their company but you know it's just the right time to start like, um, what does it matter really? <laughs> i mean well it is i mean there is some heartache because it's taking up parking and the school is limited on parking as well um i do need to talk to the mayor and to dan about some concerns about some other things um that hopefully the city can address with the route well, not really with the route, but with um, with some things that are overflowing into the parking lot of where staff need to be parking. I don't want to throw this person under the bus. But there are some concerns that need to still be addressed because we're shortened of, they're shortened parking mm -hmm. over there and stuff too. So there's some things that the city probably needs to address. Um, but other than that, um, I was going to have a theater board meeting this week, but it got rescheduled till next week because they need to vote on presidents and stuff, and the major like nobody could come, so it got canceled short notice. But it is set for next Tuesday at five o'clock, same place, same time. So, and that's all I got. Great. I think this has never happened, but all of you covered everything on my update list, so we yeah, are yeah. good. Any reason to hold a closed session this evening, Council? No. no. All right. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. You're doing okay. Can I get a I'm going to call this the last time that happened. So we're one meeting on late. We're out early. Hi.
hanging out. Yeah. yeah. I want 